Hey there, my name is Sheena and I'm very delighted to be your trainer for the rest of your course. Well, I'm working as a senior DBA and technical recruiter from last 15 years. So being into recruitment, I have come up with few common topics that I found most of interviews giving me very foggy answers. So let's have a look on them. What is front end and what is back end? What is database? What is SQL? You might be like, we know about it. But let me tell you, most of students are unsure about the simple concept. These concepts seem very simple but yet very tricky. So let's have a quick look and discuss them. First, what is front end? Front end is user interactive interface between you and back end. You means user who is using this application. Well, I have picked this common example of Gmail login page because I think you all are familiar with this, isn't it? So my basic question is, how we log in into it? <laughs> I know it's a very simple question and I know you all know answer. But believe me, it has very tricky concept inside it. We write our email ID and password, then click on sign in. If your credentials are correct, you will be in. If not, you can't log in. But have you ever wondered who is checking your credentials? Where your credentials are being stored? Let's have a look onto the bigger picture. So whenever you sign up, your email ID and password gets stored in tabular form in backend. So backend is a place where actual data is stored in the form of tables. Guys, whenever you work on any application, software, website, it is made up of two things. One, front end and second is back end. So combination of front end and back end is application. Next topic to be discussed is what is database? Database is collection of any important information stored in the form of tables. I think now you can relate backend and database. So whatever we store in backend is actually database. You remember we discussed same thing when we were discussing backend? that we store information in the form of tables. So backend is database and we store data in the form of tables there. I want to explain this particular thing with very layman familiar and simple example. And that is Microsoft Excel sheet. How we store data there? We store data there in the form of tables, right? I'm not saying that we're going to store data in the same way in companies. We have special softwares to store in companies that is Oracle, SQL Server, IBM DB2, MySQL. So this is very familiar and layman example of a database. Now most important question, what is SQL? How SQL comes into the picture and why we are learning it? Well, SQL stands for Structure Query Language and it is used to interact with database. As now you know what database is. But you should also know how to interact with database. Means, if I want to fetch some information from database or I want to insert some information into the database, well, we can achieve this only with the help of SQL. So SQL is a language to communicate with database. Now I think it is pretty clear why we have to learn SQL. Most of my students often ask me that whether we have to learn different SQLs for different databases. And good news is, no, a big no. SQL is always same for all the databases. Now let's understand SQL a little more deeper. There are six clauses in SQL. Now you might be like, what is clause? Clauses are predefined words whose task is already defined. Means whenever you will install any database in your system, these six clauses will automatically get installed. Means these are predefined words. Now these six clauses are select, from, where, group by, having, order by. Out of these six clauses, first two clauses are mandatory and rest of four clauses are optional. Means if I want to write some query, I have to specify select and from into it. I can skip where, group by, having, order by if my query is not demanding, but it is must to specify select and from. There are some rules when we are dealing with clauses. Let's have a look. Sequence of clauses should be same as mentioned in the previous slide means their sequence should always be same. You can't interchange their sequence. You can't write group by first and then view or having first and then group by. Their sequence should always be same. 
Interchanging of clause is not allowed as I have discussed with you. We can skip any clause if not required. We can skip any optional clause. You know why SQL is called structure query language? Because structure and sequence of all clauses will always remain same. So guys, that was all about clauses. Now let's see how to use them. First of all, out of all six clauses, why select and from a minute tree? I'll explain this with one of the example. Suppose I have two tables. So this is database guys. As I've told you, database is a collection of tables. So when you store data in the tabular form, that's database. So I'm storing employee table and department table in this database with two columns, name and salary in employee, name and department ID in department. Suppose I want to see name of employees working in my organization. Always remember that whenever you want any column to get displayed on your screen, you will write that column in select clause. So select clause is meant to display that column which you want to see. Like in this case, we want to see name of employees. So query will be select name. But you can clearly see that in this particular database, there are two tables having name column. If I write select name, my SQL engine will be confused that, okay, I'll select name, but from which table? Because there are two tables having this column name. It is mandatory to write from clause because from clause is used to specify table name whose column you want to fetch. Like in this case, you will write select name from table name. So exact syntax is select name of column to be displayed from name of table whose column you are selecting. And if you want to see all column of a table, simply you have to write select star from table name. Star means all column. You need not to specify all column names separately, just replace them with star. If you want to fetch few columns, you will write select name of first column, comma, name of second column from table name. Now let's have practical look to explain select and from clause. I'm currently into Scott schema and I'll show you a few tables in it. First table is employee. So describe employee. Describe command is used to describe structure of a table. So it's going to show you all column names with its data type. So there is one more table in this particular schema, which is DEPT. Uh, I have described it already. Suppose I want to see ename of employee table. I will write select name of column. Suppose if I'll write only this, remember whenever you want to terminate SQL query, you have to use semicolon. Semicolon means you are terminating your query and your compiler will start working. If I'll write select ename, look at this. It's saying that from keyword not found where expected. So from keyword is mandatory to write. Now let's see how to write it. So I'll write select ename from name of table is emp now you can see all ename has been selected if you want to see all column of this table select star from table name see all columns of this table has been displayed if you want to see only two columns select ename comma suppose job from table name now you can see two columns has been displayed. So guys, this was select and from. Well, I believe if you know select and from clause, half job is done. So please keep on practicing guys. Thank you.